Today, I had the pleasure to speak yet again with Dr. Scott Walter, factory simulation and robotics expert. He's become quite the regular on this channel. What we're discussing today is some research that was done by Dennis Hong and his collaborators way back in 2014 that predate the Tesla bot knee and show us a direction of evolution of the knee itself. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I am once again with Dr. Scott Walter, factory simulation and robotics expert. And uh, we're, we're here to present a, a little gift in a sense. If, if one happens to do some research into Dennis Hong, who is working with Tesla and is, is a university professor at UCLA, and DARPA and Knees, you come up with a really interesting paper from 2014 or about eight years ago. And I'm going to share that quickly let me see if i've got the right one so it's just a one page paper but it also comes with a video which is super interesting to look at but anyway you can see that he's got a paper or he and his co-authors have a paper entitled two configurations of series elastic actuators for linearly actuated humanoid robots with large range of motion Ha, that's a lot to say. Uh, <laughs> and what does basically, that mean? That's a mouthful. What yep. does that mean? It's a mouthful. So then we can turn to some video. So let us take a look mm -hmm. at, this is from AI Day. So I'm going to kind of skip to the end and then we'll skip back again. Uh, let me make sure I have the sound turned off. Okay. So this is uh, from approximately 37 minutes into the AI Day presentation. And you can see that they have the human knee and then they magically go to the uh to optimus or tesla bots knee with this what do you call it a four bar linkage and two yeah, linear a four bar actuators bar linkage in there mm -hmm. right and i think i can't remember if they actually show it rotating or not let me like speed this up a little bit yeah they do they do they <laughs> yeah do. it, it kind of gets yes. okay and there so we here we've got this mm -hmm. slide which shows the four bar actuator and you're going to go into a lot more detail about that uh this is also important and i think you'll probably talk about this too right is the, the important right. part about yes this particular configuration is the force uh that the, you have, Minim you have minimizing a, a, the force yep. right you have a more or less consistent amount of force needed versus a very very high amount at the extremes of rotation so and let's see if we can get to the part where ah <laughs> well that's not actually very helpful because that's let's see well oh yeah okay so there we go so mm -hmm. let me just let me play this backwards and forwards a little bit but here you can see how what's going on is that the linear actuator up at the top is is rotating the lower half of the leg i mean <laughs> that's that's basically yes. what's going on so just as if you were there, moving through a leg. linkage mechanism right right and we're right. going to go into details on exactly how that's working right but anyway i wanted to show the entire thing and you can also see importantly the uh it looks like actually the same actuator is on the rear part where the hamstring yes. of the thigh would be which pulls the entire thing up and down or pushes it up and down which it's, whichever way you want to it think does about. the hip flexion there yep right mm -hmm. and then the other part about uh, uh dennis's video not so much the paper is these two linear actuators down here and the way that the foot is controllable along multiple axes using these yes. two actuators here so all right i will yep. stop sharing and you can take over if you want to but anyway we thought oh, this was okay. really worth bringing up because this is actually research from eight years ago that is clearly the predecessor or what <laughs> the evolutionary parent to what's going on at tesla these days so yes oh yes <laughs> Cool. Okay, so you should be able to see the paper. Uh, as we know, this is a, a mouthful of title. Basically, what he's saying is they're, they're presenting two different types of servos. That's why two configurations to do different things using series elastic actuators. That basically means actuators that have uh, built-in flexibility in them already. That's what you'd use in a cobot. Industrial robots that don't use that because they're um, they're using position sensors and instead of force torque. But if you want to have a little bit of compliance. And a little bit of safety if you're around humans you need to use these series of uh, uh elastic actuators so okay uh, so the elasticity for, allows mm -hmm. some like yes. if you hit something it, it will it's comply basically compliance it. exactly right. it also allows you to measure uh, f uh force along with position so if okay. you want to get a force measurement you need to have something like this and right. it's and the idea is that they actually want to have a linear drive to actuate some ranges of motion so rather than using a a, a rotary motor at the joint itself 
they want to be able to use something which is a linear actuator pushing around okay. and trying to do it and get a large range of motion. In other words, they like the knee to be able to move through it, you know, more than 90 degrees, 120, 150, something like that. So they want to get a large range of motion. And and I think and just, to, that, just to just yeah. to to back up for one second again for people, because you know, for somebody like me who's not a robotics expert, that's what I would imagine is if this was the knee joint, I would place an actuator right here mm -hmm. that was a rotational one and it would just rotate. Yes. It. And it something right fine. there at the ball. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, something right there. You imagine right. like a little motor just spinning there, making it go around like that. Right. Um, right. And and what they want to do is they they want to use a linear actuator just because they can get a bit more power out of it. The problem the linear actuator might limit the range of motion that maybe you could only move the knee this much, and you'd like to be able to get right. it to come all the way down there. So how do you design a mechanism for doing that? And we're right. going to kind of take a look at that. Um, the, the, I highlighted a few things in here that, you know, they mentioned something about a ball screw transmission. Mm -hmm. I'm going to explain what that is in the inversion of a Hurkins linkage. And okay. we'll, we'll understand what that is. The, the main reason for them doing this is if you remember in AI day, they talked about being able to flatten the, the force curve through the range of motion. And here's an example where they've already done that. And they're showing if you use a linear actuator, you end up getting this kind of torque curve. Right. Whereas right. what they've come up with it seems to be pretty much linear through the full range of motion that they want, which is about 150 degrees. Right. So they have two types of actuators. They've got a, a simple linear actuator that they're going to use for the ankle. Uh, and they can use it what they call a parallel action. And we're going to be able to see how that parallel actuation is, is able to be done. We've already talked about about how the wrist mechanism is working. It's the same way that right. the ankle's working. Uh, so we'll we'll look at that again. Uh, and and again, this whole thing about the inversion of the of the linkage, and I'll get to that and exactly what that's supposed to mean. But first, what we might want to do is just take a quick look at the video and then we can break it down. Right. Uh, a little bit further. So okay. right here, and this this is from uh, yep. Hong. Uh, sorry, I should put the lead author first. It is from Dennis Hong was part of it, but uh, Kanabe at all. So this mm -hmm. would be from 2014 yes. from their DARPA paper. So yeah, just to be clear yes. that this yes. is not Tesla's thing. This is actually theirs from eight years ago. Right, yeah. right, right. So what you're going to see up here is you, you've got the actuator up here, which is using a ball screw drive. If you look at this linear actuator here, that spins around it's actually threaded right uh and and along here is where you have basically what's called the ball screw that moves along there and that's what's going to actuate this and i have sort of you know i, I brought a prop to show you how that works okay oh let's <laughs> so, stop wait let's let's so, stop screen sharing for one second so it's yep. big enough so people okay can see it. I'll, I'll do let's it. Let's go ahead and do that. So here, yeah, okay. So now we can see works. better. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, so so here we go. We got a screw mechanism, and if I just spin it like this, you see the nut stays in the same place. Right. But if I hold the nut in one location, you see the motion of that is causing my finger to kind of move along with the nut. That's a ball screw drive. Okay. Right. It's just okay. a, a nut on a screw that's attached to a motor <laughs> that spins around. I so, love your props. Yeah. Your props are so simple. It's like, hey, look, this is easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there must be something around the house I can use. Yeah. So um, that's being used to, to actuate. And it's it's kind of hard to tell from this exactly okay. what's going on. But it's, uh, you should it's go ahead and reshare again now. So like, yeah, oh, so yeah, can... there we go. Let's go ahead and actually right. hit the share button. There we go. <laughs> um, it may be a little bit hard to understand what's going on in here, but you, you basically <laughs> have something that moves along here. And you've got a linkage that is pinned here and pinned there and pinned there. And I actually have some slides for that that I'll get into okay. later on. So and, they have and these the, two types of actuators. The yep. red point okay. is the actual point of rotation that you care yes. about. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Or or actually, actually, this here is going to be their knee. So this kind of stabilizes the whole linkage. So you've got a drive right. mechanism up here, which okay. is actuating it. So it's moving along here. And then you've got this linkage here and this other linkage and this is basically your knee joint right there so that's right. the knee joint that they'd want to go through so they're they're trying to to get it to move around like that and then uh and then of course the, the just go back for a second the, the point they're trying to make here is that this torque curve <laughs> is very flat so throughout right. the entire range of motion that they're getting uh the uh yeah the actual torque remains right. pretty much consistent throughout and and just to be clear the reason why you care about that is because you have to build a bigger actuator the, the higher the maximum amount of torque is the bigger the actuator is so you yes. you want to be able yes. to build a smaller more efficient actuator yeah so yes now now what they're seeing here at first we're not seeing the hurricanes linkage uh what we're right. seeing is the uh the linear drive 
that they're using in a parallel fashion. So parallel means right. both of them are next to each other and they work in combination to give you two degrees of freedom down here in the ankle. So they have this lower cardin joint here, which gives you um, both a pitch in a roll direction. So the pitch right. is through this axis and then the roll is about there. And then you can see also these cardin joints that need to be attached to both ends <clears throat> of the actuator arms and up here. So I want you to also notice there's a lot of actuation wow. going on up there. So it's a pretty complex mechanism to get those two degrees right. of freedom. Here right. we're beginning to see the flexion on the knee itself. And it's a right. little hard to, to pick out here. We're going to see it in a second. I think when it comes back down up oh, right there, this here is the ball screw drive that's sticking out here. So you see this thing is kind of yeah. moving right up. Yeah. Yeah. That's the drive unit that's connected to this. And this, is what actuates the whole mechanism, which is causing the knee to do the flexion. Right. The the upper, the, of course, the upper leg is being lifted up by the, the actuator in the yes. back of the leg, but the knee right. bend, right. Yes. And, and mm -hmm. this is actually, this yeah. is actually and, really and pretty. When it does this, it actually does a really wide range of motion yes. here, I believe. Yeah, this one. Yes, like a, that like is a running motion. That is, yeah, that's very athletic as far as the range right. and also being able to come back. So, that, and now we're, we're seeing some of the flexibility that they have built in. And also we're going to see that when it stands on different surfaces. So you have the pitch here. So yeah. you can have two different surfaces here. And the robot is able to balance itself uh, on a flat surface and one that's angled a little bit uh, right. by using the, the pitch. And then the roll comes in and say, look at the roll. And oh, no, sorry, that's still a pitch. And the roll is going to come in here in a second. And yeah. You're going to step on something like that. Okay, basically a little bit of pitch and roll. And now they're going to have one where they get the full roll coming on in here. And I think that's, or did I miss it? Huh, I, it was in there. <laughs> I think I the roll is remember. actually the rocks where it's kind of like it pitch may and have, roll. It may have gone, yeah. it may have happened a little bit sooner and I didn't notice it. I think it was right. happening in the beginning. Uh, they were showing. Well, you can see it like in the yeah. air, right? Because it's definitely got some roll yeah. to it. In yeah, there. It, it was something I thought. That's funny. I think maybe I was looking at another another video somewhere where they actually got a lot of roll on there. <laughs> right. And that roll seemed to be, seemed to look like a sprained ankle to me, you know? So they, <laughs> they, they've got way more roll than you actually need to be able to stand right. on some of those. Yeah. But I mean, but this is really important because if the robot is ever going to be able to operate in a non, you know, factories generally pretty mm -hmm. smooth yeah. and clean. You need but, to have a little but, bit. Yeah. But to have and, that, and you need a little to... bit of that anchor roll because because we already saw with with the Tesla bot when it was right. you know standing around and, and leaning one way or another, you still need a little bit of that in your ankle. The question is how much. So right. on a surface that's not very flat, you need a lot. But even on right. a flat surface, you do need a little bit to be able to maintain your right. balance. Well, and even so in the in the picture on the right there, you can see his center of gravity has been shifted a little bit over to the yep. it's it's left, so that there's got to be some roll mm -hmm. in the ankles in order to keep the feet contacted with the ground. It's it's actually really yes. similar to we talked a lot about the hand, how you can press your hand against something and move your elbow around and keep the hand more or less the mm -hmm. same position. Same thing with the feet. It's basically like that. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, that's so that's pretty awesome. Around. And <laughs> and they do have a pretty wide range of, of motion um yeah. on the ankle uh everywhere that you need. So we can see that. So now let's get into some of the details. Um so I think I already showed a little bit of one of the slides. So we, we've got that. Let's let's move on to the other slides that we have here. And there. All right. So let's go down to one. So again, here's the mechanism um, that they're, they're, they're talking about again. There we go. Okay, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm caught up. Oh, now. Okay, it's up. gotcha. <laughs> okay, good. So, um, so what exactly is the Hurricane's mechanism? We're going to go in that uh, in the detail of how these different kinds of mechanisms work. But first, there's and, a little and by bit the of a way, breakdown on this. Thor, Thor is Romella's. Um, that's their robot. The, the, I think that's their. That's I the robot. That, that's the robot they came up with, and it was. Yes, it actually stands for something, and I'm looking at it right now, right. <laughs> and. There's the acronym. The acronym's in there. So I'm like, look at it right there. It is the ah. Oh, we'll figure it out later. But it yeah. is an acronym, right? And it's um, sort of along the lines of Atlas with Boston Dynamics. It's kind of like you know, Greek god name, but also an acronym. Um, but but you could see one of the things that was really interesting. If you go back to the video, it's got this like lidar system that's like a little spinning barrel in the head for its kind of yes. sensing thing. So very very different than Tesla bot, obviously. But, yes. But yes. anyway, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so what I did is I just marked on here in these these different colors okay. uh, what shows up you know kind of later on in the video when they were showing um, 
this slide here. Right. So when they're showing that, you know, basically that red bar is this one, the blue <laughs> bar is this one, the green bar is actually the knee. So it's rotating about here. And I want right. you to notice that, you know, this, this is kind of to ground, that's to ground, that's to ground. So all these are sort of attached to the same ground mechanism. The only thing that moves is this green part that I've kind of highlighted in green. So that's gotcha. that's the part that that's going to be moving along there. And, you know, you've got the green bar, but then you can attach whatever linkage you want underneath it. So that is um, a little bit of a breakdown on what that looks like there. And what I will now do is start to show a little bit about how different mechanisms work. OK, so. Ah, ah demos. Yes. All right. <laughs> Demo. So let's do a little bit of mechanical design. So uh, when you take a class in mechanical design, the first thing you find out is that what mechanical engineers want to do is they're constantly trying to figure out how to convert one type of emotion into another type of motion. So the most common one is how to take rotary motion and turn it into linear or how to take linear and turn it into rotary motion. So right. we have the, this example here where as the red bar rotates, you can see I can actually get linear motion over here. Now you may all recognize this mechanism. This is known <laughs> as a slider crank and it's in every single ice vehicle. Right. So I was going to say, uh, it looks like a, looks like an automotive piston. <laughs> this is, this is a crankshaft right here. That's your crankshaft. This is your connecting rod and here's your piston. I don't have the cylinder in there, but that's right, basically right. how it works. Yeah. And now the thing that, that's, that's going on here is you got to remember you know, <clears> the, the whole idea of, of a lever arm, the, you know, the, the longer a lever that you have on something, the easier it is to make something to, to move. And you also notice that if you push in the wrong direction on the lever arm, nothing happens. Right. So if we look at it right now, if this was to be our, our piston that's actually pushing, so, so rather than rotating this and turning it into linear motion, we now want to take linear motion and turn it into rotary motion. Right. We are pushing along here. And if we are pushing straight on down here, we don't go. Because we all know that. When you sometimes take a mechanism like that, it's like, oh, it won't go. Until right. it buckles and breaks either <clears> you know in this direction or that direction, it's not going to go. And then when you start to go up there, suddenly now you're kind of pushing in the direction of motion. And the more that you push in the direction of motion, this bigger arrow that you get, right. which is pretty much telling you you're creating a bigger torque. So right about here is where you get the, the best bang for the buck. So the uh, your force is now uh, uh, tangent to the radial direction. <clears throat> and then it's going to decrease as you go along here. Right. So, so if you were if you were building you, yeah. an ice vehicle, mm -hmm. the 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 explosion of the gasoline air mixture would happen around there, so that it would get the max somewhere amount. around there, and you you, yeah. you hope you're getting the max right there, and it comes around. And then right. the only reason this mechanism works is because of inertia. If right. there was a no inertia, uh, then it would just kind of lock up and stop. So you right. have enough inertia that kind of brings you around. That allows you to get to the next one because in a sense you're only able to push for a little bit and then you kind of go for a ride uh and of course what you do in the gasoline engine is you have four of these that are staggered so that right. each of them kind of has their combustions happen 90 degrees away from the other right. so you know one one you know when i'm here okay. boom and then it comes down here and the next one will do it and it's all connected to the same shaft and it goes around Right. So, and, and by the way, this crankers. tells you, this also shows you why gasoline engines are so inefficient. Not just the fact that it's exploding yes. and, and wasting a lot of heat, but you're only getting yes. a quarter, only a quarter of the cycle is useful work. Like it's only doing, yes. yeah, pushing yeah. A car that's why you have to have at cycle. least four cylinders to really right. get it, you know, to get something with a little bit of power. Yeah, you right. can do it with one cylinder, but that's why you don't get a whole lot of horsepower. Right. And then why the thing also vibrates and everything else. Now, yeah. if we were to make this a leg mechanism, you know, put it in the leg, we could potentially do that. And we would oh, see cool. that it kind of limits the amount of travel that we would have if we made this in the leg. Right. That, you know, we go to here and then about there we bind up. So we don't have a whole lot of motion on that. And that's mainly because we didn't come up with a really good offset angle for like, let's say the initial position of the knee. So right. if, if I say offset my knee like that, so the slider mm. crank is back mm. here, mm. I can gotcha. extend the range of motion. So there are like little things that you can do to, to help improve um, the range that you would get. And that's what's going to keep you from getting too far. So you have to decide how far back can I go? How far in can I go? And you also have to make sure you have enough travel length along here. So that's that's one way of doing that. And now what I'm going to do is, oh, actually, this is what I want to bring up here, is I'm going to go ahead and show an example of the linear actuator. So I have one over here, and I will go ahead and take the slider crank out of view for now. All and right. so you'll notice this looks very similar to the slider crank. 
But the difference is this is not a piston. This is actually uh, a motor drive, which means right. we can easily drive it the whole time and we can reverse it very easily. Under, unlike an explosive mixture, <laughs> it's like only one way it goes. Right. It's kind of right. hard to go the other direction. <laughs> so, so now um, we can move it around. And you see it's a little bit different. We, this thing is not sliding anymore, but we still need to have a pin joint here. And you right. see the sliding is actually going on inside of here. So that means the motor itself is moving. Whereas in the previous one with the piston, we didn't want to do that because that thing was inside the whole engine block and you don't want the engine block rotating back and back and forth. Right. So that, those are the subtle differences between those two designs. And of course, uh, we can do so sort of the same thing here. If we want, we can go ahead and show you know, how this might work uh, in a leg and then probably have to do the same thing, realize that, oh, uh, we need to have a knee offset here, probably also about 45 degrees, something like that, at least if we want to be able to get adequate range of motion. Right. So that's a simple linear drive. Okay. And this would be, just to go back to the drill, this would be the I, the, the, the actuator would yep. be, in this case, spinning a... a, a yeah, in this case, it, it's kind of like the or it could be a piston is, is hidden yeah. inside of here yeah. in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. They, they use a different right. mechanism. You don't see... The screw outside of here, the ball right. screwdriver is more of an external mechanism. Right. It's really old school. I mean, that's how robots in the 80s were doing it. So I was kind of surprised <laughs> to say, yeah. whoa, wait a minute. It, it came back in fashion in the 2000s. So <laughs> right. um, it's it, it, so that yeah, it is one kind of mechanism. And as you can see, it kind of sticks out and get, gets in the way. Well, one thing I want you to point out is you've always got to have these pin joints <clears> everywhere <throat> to give you the degrees of freedom to be able to move. And that's going to come up when we start talking about the parallel mechanism and, and how that looks. Right. And if we continue along here and I will go ahead and I'm going to bring up what is the hooking mechanism. Okay. And uh, so this mechanism is a little bit different. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make this zero right now because so typically th this is what a four bar linkage looks like. Uh, you come in here and you, you rotate one of these axes. Right. And it makes another axis move. And I'm just going to get rid of some of that trace that I have there a little bit. So, and you'll see that the red is able to do a full 360 and the yellow just kind of goes back and forth and back and forth. It doesn't do a full 360. So right. again, this is the idea of taking one kind of motion and translating it into another type of motion. And in this case, we have a partial arc. And there could be a lot of reasons for wanting to build something like that. I think uh, old uh, windshield wipers mechanisms work kind of like this. Right. Uh, right. Oil rigs sometimes have some mechanism that looks a little bit like that. So that's the kind of shape that you get. And you notice you know, that it is a kind of an arc, but a lot of times uh, engineers are trying to figure out, is there any way we can actually take a nice rotation like this with a four bar mechanism, actually get some sort of linear motion out of it right? from that rotation? Yeah, because currently everything's yeah. rotating there. There's no linear motion. Right, in it. right. Yeah. Now this, this is typically called like a Chevy Chev linkage. Okay. Uh, and I, and there's one particular version of it, uh, which is the, the hurricane linkage, where if this is of length A, the red bar, mm -hmm. if you make all these other differences, distances, two and a half times what A is, you get something interesting. And okay. that means instead, well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add like 75 to this right now. Okay. And... What I'm interested in doing is tracing the end of the green bar. I don't really care about the yellow bar. I want to trace right. the end of the green bar. And we get something like that. And it looks yeah, hey, almost like an airfoil. That's, right. that's a rather interesting <laughs> shape. But you see everything is definitely very curvy. And there, there's nothing really linear in there at all. Right. Um, but if I make this the magic one, two, five, uh, so that everything is two and a half, what the, the red bar okay. is. And the red bar is 50 around, in that case. Oh, look at that. Right, 50, yeah. <laughs> Magic. Look at what you end up getting. You magically get, what for a range of motion in here, something which is linear. Okay. Okay. And it looks like that we can move the red axis from, you know, let's say about 90 degrees here, and it continues. So that's, so that, that's a, that we've gone 90 degrees from here to there. Right. Continue on, continue on. And this oh is a question when we start to bind up down here. Yeah. But there seems yeah. to be a long range. And so it looks like you can get maybe 135, 140, 150 right. degrees of range out of this kind of mechanism. Okay. Which is now, pretty adequate, actually. Yeah, yes. Okay. Now, the idea of this mechanism is that you have some motor down here which is spinning mm -hmm. the red axis. Right. 
That's that's the whole point of this thing. And then up here, it moves along. However, you can change the whole thing and say, well, wait a minute, let's invert the mechanism. This is what they mean right. by the inversion. By inverting, right. it says, let's actually start pushing up here and then cause the rotation to happen down here right. by adding in a linear drive. Right. Okay. So now you have this Magic. linear drive, which is now able to make that move. Right. And so you, you have to have these portions of this linkage in order for that to work. And of course, if you go too far, it just kind of like, you know, it's going to fall apart. Right. So right. You know, mathematically, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> right. uh, they usually have a hard stop on there to make sure that doesn't happen. That doesn't slide off. But there is a nice little range there. So you can now actuate it with a linear actuator right here. And that was the whole right. point uh, of the paper is to see that now you can do that. OK, so what can we do with this further? Well, we can put this in a leg. Right. And now that we have it in a leg, you see, we can make it go down here. So, so the bottom go. part of the leg is attached to where the red and the green uh, yes. joints. Yes, ba basically consider right the red yeah. bar is connected directly to that. So that right. is the whole lower right. leg. Yeah. And it pivots yeah. right here. And this pivot point is attached to the upper leg. This is attached to the upper leg. And this is attached to the upper leg. So these are these all basically have the same ground. Right. And then you have uh, a pin joint here and a pin joint there. Yeah. And it moves around there. And so you can get that range of motion. Now, these aren't exactly the same proportions that, that they're using. I think they made slight modifications to it um, right. you know, to size it to get the range that they wanted. But they were able to get about 150 degrees of movement out of the knee. Right. From straight all the way to there. And that's a lot of knee flexion. You know, if you actually right. look at your own, um, you know, if you're getting 120, that's pretty. When you're walking, it's it's probably just a little bit past 90. Right. And then, right. you know, in jogging, but, you know, you know, if you feel and, you know, I'm trying to think that that's a lot of flexion. I I, I can't even yeah. think whether they're fast running. You, you do that like as a warm up that you would bring your. Right. Your it's like if you were doing much. squats or something, you'd want to be able to flex. It or, if, you know, <laughs> if you're trying to jump over something, you know, right. and it, it, but it does seem like it's way more than you would actually need for for walking. Right. So, so uh, it, it might and, be and, and also the other aspect of this is it's a linear actuator and it's a linear force pretty much throughout the entire range of motion. So it's not there's yes. no force. Yes, the whole idea. Going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so that means uh, along here, they're able to maintain the same force along here over the 150 degrees of travel. Right. So that was the other that was the main reason for doing that is to be able to make sure that that torque curve flattens out. Right. Right. Okay, so now let, let's come to Optimus. So, well, actually, if you can, you go yeah. back to the the mm -hmm. Romella paper because, interestingly enough, you can see that the joint is actually outside the leg. the The, the actuator is outside the leg in their paper because they're. I think they're doing almost exactly what you're saying here, and so you can see that the linear actuator. It's actually in the video, but I just think it's worth pointing out because you can see it. It's it's elevated above the thigh. There's there's the actual actual yes. sitting outside of the leg, and I think one of the modifications Tesla has done is yeah, you can see right names. down here. You see this yes, right here. Yes, yes, there's exactly. the actuator coming right out yeah. here. Yes, so we're going to see that it's there, and they also are using the same mechanism for the hip. So the idea mm. is that they did it for the knee and they do it for the hip. Uh, okay, okay, that's very cool. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, and that's mentioned in the paper that they do it for the knee and the hip. Right. So right. it's, it's a very short paper, but it's in there. Uh, that you can go ahead and see <laughs> it's that. It's a lot of detail and, in a very short amount of space. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so pretty much, you know, the Thorough Hurricanes actuator uses a novel inversion. So we've seen what the inversion means of the Hurricane uh, right. four bar mechanism using a ball screw drive with linear input to actuate the rotary, you know, and they get a, a really nice torque curve over the 150 degree angle range. Right. And they also have a pretty large range of motion that's shown down here for um, all these. Uh, are definitely beyond, let's say, human capability. So it's really, really pretty good. Right. Yeah, they they even specify 135 degrees is what they say the knee can do. So that's pretty good. Yes. <laughs> yep. All right. Now, okay. So if we want, we can look at uh, what are the differences between that yeah. and Optimus. So what's going on here? And I'll go ahead and bring up now the Optimus knee. <laughs> okay. So here is the Optimus knee, and you'll see we have this similar kind of mechanism here. Right. Except we don't extend the green bar off before it pretty much stops right at the joint. Right. And you'll see the actuator has kind of come down here, and rather than the actuator 
maintaining kind of itself being always parallel to the leg that it's connected to mm. it's also needs to have this pin joint right here right and another joint where the green bar is is, uh, is attached so yeah yes yes okay. so you you have this and so that means it needs to move up and down to be able to do it and uh okay i need to make that a little bit longer to be able to, to kind of reach around and so we can sort of see how the mechanism goes back and forth like that right and then the same thing is if if we pick this i can uh decide that oh what i like to do is show what the knee would look like right this, so how the mechanisms are going to work there this so again is schematic because they're just their mechanical design we know is a little bit different but right. it is working pretty much this way right do they still get exactly the same range of motion or is that sacrifice a little bit of the knee they're flexion? sacrificing some and, and we can yeah. see that in the video that, that we're yeah. going to come up yeah. here so i mean i want you to notice is that you are getting a lot of motion here I and mean, one of the advantages of putting down here is it's not sticking out of the mechanism but right. you still have to see that it is moving around in there and we do end up seeing that in the video from ai day right and, and we'll kind of take a, a quick peek at that <clears throat> uh and what i'll do is let's see if i can get that back down here and if i can get the powerpoint to pop up like it's supposed to here <laughs> isn't that always the and, trick yeah it's always a trick and yeah, <laughs> I, I had too many slides up all right so there we go um Ish. what i want to do here is see let's yeah. kind of oh wait a minute this is this is not the one i wanted to bring up oh okay <laughs> let's see huh Actually, so I have two uh, PowerPoints uh, here. Now I'm the wrong one up. Uh, it's all good. That one there, I think. Okay. And, <clears throat> and let's see if we can get that one from the current slide. Yeah, there wow. we go. 8,000 Newtons. Those are impressive. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So we've looked at this. Um, what I wanted to point out here is that remember this mechanism, this wrist mechanism we talked right. about before. Right. And this right. is a simple linear drive they're talking about um, that they have. And right here is a very interesting joint, which is basically a ball and socket joint. Right. It, it has the same effect as the carton joint. But if you go back to that video, remember how complex the ankle joint was down at the bottom? Right. There was right. a lot of parts there. And a lot right. of the reason it's, it's so complex is the kind of range of motion that they needed, which I was saying, you don't really need that much in the foot. If, right. if you really want to have the foot go that much, then you have to get that more complex mechanism. Yeah. But if you yeah. don't need that much, you don't need that much in the hand, then you can kind of get away with it. So this is a close-up of that mechanism so we can see it. And right. for the most part, this is the primary axis that you want to rotate about. So right. you have a lot of range around the red axis. And the green is more or less just saying, this axis can kind of tilt a little bit to the left or right. Right. But not a whole lot. There's, so there's your hand can move there that a allows little you to bit, do that. A little bit. A like little this, bit to the left or right, ton. but not yeah. a lot. But it's probably just enough. So you right. do need it to be able to move a little bit left and right. Otherwise, things will mechanically bind up. Yeah. So you need right. to have a little bit of a degree of freedom there to relax it. But yeah. it doesn't have to be a whole lot. And the result is this is far less complex than what we saw right. on the bottom of the Thor. Okay, so yeah, now okay. look here. This is the same <laughs> thing that's going on. Thor. It's hard to tell, but there's actually two here. There's two actuators. Right, right. So again, these are parallel actuators. And right down here, you think it's a simple pin joint, but it's actually, it's a small ball and socket joint. Right. Where again, it gives you a, a little bit of slosh back and forth. Right. In the non-primary direction, but in the, in the principal direction, everything's there. And uh, we can see it, it's kind of the same thing up there. So rather than have these complex cardin joints up in, <clears throat> in the bottom, you just have those things here. Here is kind of a cardin joint. You do have, and I've, I've list shown it here, this is where your major range of motion is anyways on the ankle. Right. So you have rotation about this vertical axis and then what is kind of a horizontal axis here. And then you get a little, just enough right there to be able to <clears throat> handle it. So if you look at that, you'll say, wow, that is just so compact and far more elegant now yeah. than what Thor was. So right. Thor was definitely a prototype and then a lot of refinement to what that well, and also was doing. I think you know it looks like Thor was built to have a very extreme range of motion, whereas what they've done is they've said, look, it's yes, basically and we I just agree. have to be able to shift the center of gravity and have the feet remain planted. It doesn't yep. have to do anything crazy. So yeah, and somewhere in here, I trying to think whether I dropped the video in here or not. Oh, I think you have the video. 
and you can show the range of motion that they have. And I would say the range of motion is but most 120 degrees on the knee. Right, right. It doesn't really go that far. So when, when you look at it flexed down, and this wasn't right. fully flexed down here, it can go a little bit more. And yeah, let's go ahead and bring that up. Yeah, uh, do you want me to do that? Hold, hold yeah, on. Yeah, go ahead and bring it up and I'll, right. I'll talk to you through I it. I will bring up the video. Okay. Do you want this one or do you want the... Uh, yeah, yeah, the right there, right there. So you yeah. go in there and now okay. stop. So, so let me right let there. me see if I can just go can go back and forth. Frame at a time-ish. Right. Uh, if you look at the actuator up at the top, you're going to see it's moving around a lot. So, right. so that big black motor that's up there, you're going to see it's moving up there. You, you see how they had to make a little bit of room for it also up at the top. You see how it's kind of cut away there? Yeah. At the top? Yeah. Yeah. Oops, let me go backwards and, a little bit. Yep. And of course, I'm looking at so, my okay. So if you go a little bit faster, you you can see that servo is is moving up and down. So you have to have a lot of space yeah, for that. Right. And you can also see that as you start to get the extent of the knee, that mechanism is starting to get to its limit. Right. So so it looks like 90 degrees ish is probably about plus a as little, far as it's yeah, going. a little bit, a little bit more. It's hard to see. Yeah, it's yeah. maybe 120. It's about it. It's not right. much more than that. So right. Thor can go a bit more. But right. You don't really need that excessive range if you're just talking about walking. Right. And you could probably do, you know, maybe run a little bit. It doesn't, doesn't have to be yeah. that much. Okay. And and they're probably not showing the full range there. If you continue it down, uh, go back to where it looked like was the the kickback. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Here? Okay. Right the kick, yeah. Just right. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then let's do it again and stop right there okay i'm thinking did that just kind of bottom out yeah that might be about where it can go because yeah because it looks like what's, what's limiting happening it now is, is actually the motor right the, the, the motor, motor the motor itself is actually hitting the the, the stuff underneath yeah, it. yeah you still have a little bit more on the linkage that but at, at the same time if you look at that you're losing the mechanical advantage also because, right because there's that bar that it's basically right. trying to uh, push on right now right. and that angle there uh is starting to get kind of uh, too parallel too so great, you're losing yeah. a little bit of the mechanical advantage so okay right. so they limit the range but by limiting the range look at the advantage you have in your mechanics right and and in the form factor too Our you don't have to have this down. big thing sticking out of the leg either so yeah yeah so, uh, exactly. exactly big advantage you lose that beautiful athletic running motion that it had but you gain a lot so yeah all right yes so yeah there's there's gain. so yeah. it's really cool to see you can see what you know the 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 original paper was designed to show off look at all these cool things that we can do if we build these complex mechanisms you can see tesla going but what's the minimum <laughs> what's the absolute minimum amount of stuff we need to get something that's adequate not something that's going yep. to have this extensive yep. range of motion yep. so, yeah yeah that's and, and the thing to remember is that we were just looking at the knee but the right. same thing is being used on the hip Right. And the same mechanism on the hip is also being used on Thor in both places. Right. Right. So I'm sure there was like a, a lot of inspiration came from that. And now the refinement. And when I look at the refinement, I was like, I'm even more impressed now. Right. Because, <laughs> <Tesla Mark. laughs> right. yeah, before you see, they had to come up with it, you know, those, those complex card and joints everywhere. There's a lot of different right. degrees of freedom. Um, you know, the part count, the cost, everything goes up there, the complexity, the, the space claim, everything that's going on in there. Right. And now they're just it's just beautiful, sleek design. So it's it's just right. kind of nice to see that kind of refinement going on there. What would the word be? It's it's there's an elegance to the fact that it's so minimalistic. Yeah, like looking yes. at looking at these previous robots and robots by lots of other companies like Boston Dynamics, when you get up close on those things, you're like, oh, there's a lot going on. <laughs> Every single one of these joints oh, yeah. has many, many parts and 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 they've just reduced this yes. down. I mean, these ball and socket kind of things, if you just put a little bit of kind of a rubberized gasket or something, so it has a little compliance as it moves around, I mean it'll probably yeah, it's, it's actually there's a, it's a little metal sh uh sleeve that's kind of oh it's right because there's there a ball that's, inside that's kind of it circular. that moves around right yeah, so you don't even need that there, and it's just yeah. enough of a sleeve that it can go around right so it gives just enough play yeah you know, 15 degrees is probably all you need it might right. even be less than that it might be and 10 then degrees, but it's just enough. what would it be like self-lubricating or something like that where you didn't really have to keep adding lubricant to it or i don't think um, you'd have to lubricate it. it's probably fine it's probably yeah okay. it, it might be one of those things that you end up part of your, your maintenance procedure every now and then would, would, would lubricate it but i don't right. think it'd be that but because you're not spinning really fast 
It's yeah. not like you're doing 10,000 yeah. RPMs or anything like that. So it, it should be fine for, for right. quite a while. And I guess, honestly, the, the bulk of the force is not on that joint, too, because it's actually on the ankle joint that's more of just the unidirectional mm -hmm. one, one in the middle. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's not, yeah. it's not, there's not a huge amount of friction that's, you know, grinding on it. So, yeah, yeah. All right. It's really, it's quite an elegant design, but I think it's also very much worth pointing out the fact that it, they didn't just come out, you know, Dennis Hong at all did not come out of whole cloth in 2022 and produce this thing. There's, yes. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's incremental development over at least the past decade. And obviously there would have been yes. previous mechanisms previous to that, that they built off. And of again, and look, against. exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. So yeah, it's like, you know, we, what was it that Newton said? You know, if I seem further than others, is because I've stood on the shoulder of the giants. Of giants, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and I guess what Tesla did was they said, "Hey, we got Dennis Hong, who's been standing on the shoulders of giants and making really, really cool stuff. So let's stand yeah. on his shoulders and go ahead and work with him." Yeah, so, exactly. That's um, that's how it is. Yeah, yeah. and I, I had the very great like fun of speaking with some of his students because they actually mm. had a Romella um, booth at the AI Day. So I got to I got to talk to them and tell them how awesome they are. So this makes me even happier because you know I know probably these students are not the ones who did the paper because that's eight years ago. So they're all out in the world mm -hmm. doing their thing. But mm -hmm. it's really cool to see what what these what these guys are doing. It's amazing. Yeah. So and and that and that labs at UCLA, correct? Yes, it was at Virginia Tech at the time they did this paper. So my understanding right. is that they kind of moved <laughs> went it's, east coast it's, it's to west now coast there but okay <laughs> yeah yeah because it's kind of confusing because would that be like the the fourth ball brother <laughs> Romella? oh yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> what did it stand for i think we looked it up ahead of time it was like robotics and me mechanism mechanics lab, lab? Yeah. yeah probably yep. uh oh here it is mm -hmm. robotics and mechanisms lab yeah that's what it is so there you go mm -hmm. um yeah so anyway very, very cool stuff. I don't know if you have anything else to add to that. It's, it's just, it's just another example. It, believe it or not. I'm, yeah. You know, but I, I think it's beautiful. It's, it's like so cool to see that Tesla is, is just laser focused on making this easy to manufacture, easy to maintain, easy to operate. Mm -hmm. We didn't really talk about it, but that slide that you showed with the actuators, there's only six actuators in the whole body. So there's, 28 degrees of freedom plus i think the ones in the fingers and stuff but but i mean but the 28 degrees of freedom in the main yeah. body are done by six actuators not 28 actuators yes so, yes it, yes so so i think it's still i think the count is still 40 actuators yeah and yeah so it's it's still 40 actuators 12 20 yeah, a couple 40, extra 40. degrees of freedom but that's because you have the the extra degrees of freedom right. in the fingers right so, uh and Again, it, it goes back to the first principle, you know, always question the requirements, right? Make the requirements less dumb. And so, you know, the requirement that your knee joint had to have a flexion of 150 degrees was probably right. a dumb requirement. It's like, right. do we really need to have that? The same thing with the foot, right? Okay. The role of the foot, do we really need to have that much? So let's not make it superhuman. Let's maybe make it a little bit less and really look at that. And if you do right. that, then suddenly you find out, oh, wow, look at all this other stuff we can get rid of, <laughs> right. how we can improve everything. And again, so the again, best the best so part important. is no part. It's because you, you you get rid of right, so right. many parts when you do that. Yeah. You, yeah. you get rid of so many and you're able to simplify everything. So uh, mm -hmm. definitely the, always start at the beginning. <laughs> Right. You start with the very first principle. <laughs> Be less dumb. Start with first principles. Best part is no part. And that works. Process, it, trust me. It, it also works in software design, not just right. in mechanics. Sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. All, really always question the requirements mm -hmm. because sometimes they will just burden you with requirements that you don't need. And right. that's what slows everything down. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for spending time with uh, with me and with everybody mm -hmm. in the audience. I hope this is valuable. I, I mean, I just feel like this is kind of like AI day is like one of those gifts that keeps on giving because, and now that we've yeah. found like this research paper, now we need to go out and look and see if we can find some other stuff too. Uh, but it also might explain yeah. why Tesla was willing to talk about this in so much detail because they actually knew that it was published information already. So they're like, oh, yeah, it's yeah, already yeah, out yeah. there. All, so we can be yeah. very, very forthcoming with this stuff. So, <laughs> so right. yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. And uh, at, at the same time, I mean, it's almost like, you know, investigative journalism here. Oh, 
wow, where did those right. ideas come from? Right. <laughs> and being able to trace them down. So yeah, so we can yeah. see that. I feel like Tim Dodd, you know, he's going through on the rockets trying to figure out, right. you know, the family tree. And we're going to do the same right. thing with Oculus. Oh, gosh. Wow. We'll, we'll trace the knee joint. I don't think it'll be as complicated as the as the Soviet rocket engine video. Yeah. <laughs> but if somebody ever wants to, like, trace the knee joints back on robots, because robots have been around since, the well, before the 50s. There were mechanical robots that didn't have any brains in them in the 19th century. Very elegant yeah, machines. Automatons. Yeah, yeah, there, there automatons. are operas about them and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm, yeah. and so, Way so anyway, Disneyland, you had them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. We could look at like Pirates of the Caribbean, like the ride from the 50s. So, uh, yeah, it's a small and, world after uh, all. So, yeah, lots of that stuff. So, yeah. Um, and, and the, and, and Tales of Hoffman. I mean, one of them is Hoffman right. falls in love with an automaton. And that was written in the, uh, the 19th century. You know, he's right. so convinced it was real. <laughs> <laughs> right. So there we go, man. We're going to, we're going to cycle back because eventually they're going to put such good skins on these things that people are going to start thinking they're real yep. again. So we'll, we'll yep. cycle back to tales of Hoffman again. All right. Well, thank you yep. so much we'll for the, spending uh, the yeah. afternoon. Yeah. Yep. And we will talk to yep. you all later. Take care. Bye-bye. Yep.